Hey everybody, I'm Scott Weichel. You're listening to My Cat of Country on Fish Creek Radio. My guest tonight is, they are a Grammy and CMA finalist, and they've won the Billboard Duet of the Year, BMI and ASCAP Awards, and uh, been recording music for about 46 years now. And uh, you hear a lot of their music on our show, and we're very happy uh, to have uh, the gentleman with us tonight, Mr. Jack Blanchard. Would you welcome him to My Cat of Country? Jack, how are you tonight? Oh, pretty good. Uh I kind of missed the snow. I wish I was there. <laughs> well, I got plenty of it. I can send you some, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it's real nice down your way. Oh, uh, down here. I'm, I've got winter clothes I want to wear, and it's in the 80s out there. I hate it. <laughs> well, I'd love that. I'll tell you what. Last year, we had a we had no snow in December. It's the first time I can ever remember that, and, yeah. and we're making up for it this year. <laughs> yeah, well, we're from Buffalo, you know, so... Uh, we kind of uh, the snow has good memories for us. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because there wasn't any school. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, we gotta love the snow days, you know. <laughs> My daughter is a- anxiously awaiting a snow day. She was disappointed today because she had to go to school, you know. <laughs> yeah, I used to play hockey a lot too, you know. Oh, did you? Well, yeah, I, I played semi-pro hockey for one season. You did for what team? Uh, it was the G. It was the GOP team. Uh, they just provided uh, transportation expenses and uniforms. Uh, it wasn't any big deal. Uh, it was like a Republican Party. Uh, that's the closest I ever came to being a Republican. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, I've got a new song here that I've been playing from you guys uh, called Second Tuesday in December. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. You, that's, you're right about on the one day late with that, right? It was yesterday, Second Tuesday in December. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's a, it's a song that we did quite a while ago. We that, That's a remaster, I believe you have. I hope it is, anyway. The, the remaster turned out great. Uh, most of the songs that I write have something to do with something that happened to me in my life. I hitchhiked all over the country. I've been all over. Missy and I traveled in, in 49 states. We missed Hawaii. So we've been all over the place. And uh, most of these things have some of the lines in there and some of the story ideas come out actually from, from, from life itself. Wow. That's pretty cool. Well, I think that's what sets country music apart. Uh, and even o- just older music in general, it sets it apart from what you hear nowadays. You know, it's it's real and it has, uh, it gives it longevity. You know, when you're singing about something that uh, you know you could actually relate to and you know about. Well, this is about a couple that uh, uh, they're breaking up, and, and not in an angry way, just a finding out that, that it didn't work for either one of them, mm-hmm. and uh, so it's a, it's a breaking up song in that in that respect. <laughs> well, I think that's uh, there's a lot of breaking up songs out there. That's for sure. We've all been there one time or another, unfortunately. <laughs> or as the seniors here in Florida say, straightening up is hard to do. That's right. <laughs> well, uh, let's go. Let's go back, and I want to talk about uh, Tennessee Birdwalk. This was a big number one song back in 1970 <clears throat> for you and Misty. Tell me a little bit about that song. Okay, sure. Are you still with me? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and tell me about that song, would you? Which one? Uh, Tennessee Birdwalk. Oh yeah. I didn't know that you were ready to talk again. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we had uh, that was the, the last one they had in the can on Wayside Records, a little label we were on out of uh, New England, and uh, they, that was going. They were going to try one more song on us if we didn't get a big hit. We were out, and uh, we had we wanted. Something else, it was in the can there to be put out. We thought we were ballad love song singers and didn't want to hurt our image by becoming uh, typecast as uh, funny song singers. But uh, I said, I wrote that in, four, in 20 minutes uh, one day, and Misty was at the store and she came home, and I, I was laughing at it myself, and uh, she broke up when I sang it to her. And uh, well, against our arguments, they, they did re- release it, and uh, we got a call on the phone from our manager, and he said, uh, you better get your bags back. We're selling 50000 a day. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. So it, it, it was 16 weeks on the, on the Billboard chart. Went over to Pop, and uh, even into, whether they used to have easy, easy Listening or Middle of the Road or whatever they called it back then, it was on all three charts. Wow, that's amazing. 
He had some very interesting song titles. You had uh, Humphrey the Camel, um, Fire Hydrant Number Seventy Nine. Yeah, that one's that one's uh, <laughs> one of my favorites. Yeah. I like that one too. Uh, the legendary Chicken Fairy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. I love these. Uh, one of the one of the songs I really liked that you guys did was Bethlehem Steel. That was our first record. Was it really? No kidding. Well, not not our first record. We we, we were doing stuff in the pop field down in, where we lived in Miami. We didn't know what direction we were going to take, and uh, we put out uh, a couple of them that were semi pop hits, and then one was uh, covered by the Ventures, Note for Note, and they had a hit on it called Gemini. But then uh, we decided we want to get into country music because my voice doesn't fit anything else, and. Uh, so I started writing country songs, and we we went to Key West and started doing that uh, country show. And uh, within two weeks, in this nightclub where we were playing, two guys that were in the Air Force came in and signed us to a, a, a four-song recording contract and took us to Nashville. Is that right? And Bethlehem Steel was the first release. Wow. That's really cool. Uh, did you write that song? Yeah. That's great. I worked in every factory in Buffalo. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> when they had went back when they had factories in Buffalo. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's great. Well, you and Misty, you you guys have been married for a long time now, right? Yeah, guys, about forty five, fifty years, I guess. Wow. Don't 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 tell her I don't remember. <laughs> well, we're guys. We're not supposed to remember that stuff. Although my uh, my wife is one to forget things like that, and I usually do remember. So we're kind of the yeah we're the kind of the exception in that case, I guess. <laughs> Our favorites that we've done is a song called. Uh, Somewhere in Virginia in the rain. You remember that one? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's a great song. I like um, a Home, a Place in My Mind too. We've been playing yeah, that one quite a bit. Yeah, that's on the on the on the bluegrass charts right now. Yeah, I was going to say you guys have been uh, just killing the independent charts, and every time I, uh, you know, I, I get the updates, the emails, and everything, you you guys are always in there, and I think that's fantastic. You know, you've got a you got a big fan base out there, and that says a lot. Yeah, great. You know that. And a, a place in my mind, uh, Bobby Thompson's playing the banjo. I just love working with him. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, folks, I should tell you, too, you can go to jackandmisty.net. That is their website, and uh, all of your music is available there as well as on CD Baby. And, of course, you can read about uh, Jack and Misty's career and see where they're going to be playing uh, show dates and all that good stuff. And uh, Or Facebook. I'm a, we're on Facebook, too. Facebook, too. We'll be sure we'll be sure to put that on our Facebook page, too, and share that. Okay, with great. Everybody. Yeah. Now, now Misty, uh, she, uh, how did you guys meet and and start singing together okay we were living in uh, hollywood florida and both of us were piano players and i was playing uh, uh, singles or, or maybe with a drummer or a bass or something uh, in, in the small clubs down there and she she had a group out of the country uh nightclub called uh, the the uh to the corral, and uh, we knew of each other because being uh, playing in town, we all, they had ads in the paper all the time, and our picture was in the paper, the local paper. And uh, finally, I went out to, to catch her, uh, to get to get a look at her. I heard about her, you know, and she plays great piano. She's a genius, and I was really impressed with, the, but not with the piano so much, so much as how she looked, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I made a date with her, and she stood me up. <laughs> And uh, she said, I finally found out why. Her friends told her that I was in the mafia. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and it wasn't that. that was, I we did work off and on for, the, for those guys, and I ran a couple of clubs for them for a while. But, and I saw I wore the black shiny suit and the silver tie, which was the uniform then. And I guess I, I, must, I might have given that impression, but it wasn't, it wasn't true at all. Later on, we, uh, I was playing in a club uh, called the Copa, and we used to get Dean Martin and... and uh, Jimmy Durante, and uh, it was an Italian uh, restaurant, and uh, Joe DiMaggio, I had dinner with him there. It was uh, quite a place, and Misty was playing down the street at that point. Uh, we're both doing piano singles, and she came up, on, I, w I came in on my night off to see if they were doing any business, and she was talking to my boss about getting a job. So uh, he said he liked me, uh, he was satisfied with me, So, but he bought her dinner, and we got talking, Misty and I, and then a few weeks later, we met at a benefit where we were both scheduled to play, and uh, she came with another guy and left with me, and <laughs> we've been together ever since. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> 
when uh, when did you guys first start start doing your duets together? Uh, well, first of all, I, we better jump back a little bit because both of us were born in Buffalo in the same hospital. Is that right? No kidding. Yeah, and both of us, our parents were named John and Mary, and both of us had sisters, Virginia. Wow. And bo blue eyes, brown hair, and played piano. You know, it's it's just a strange thing. <laughs> It must have been a musician in a woodpile there. Somewhere. I guess so. Well, that sounds like a bet to be uh, marriage there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what was the next thing you just asked? Well, I was going to ask when you guys uh, first started recording together. Yeah, we played all around Miami. With, uh, we had a like a jazz-oriented society band, played big supper clubs. Uh, all these movie stars and everybody used to come in the cl these clubs where we played. And I, I hated that kind of job, but it was paying the bills. And uh, we said, we got to do something about this. And we started making a few records uh, around, like I told you, around my, my Miami at the nice studios mm -hmm. and uh, putting the, our paychecks into that. And this guy owned a radio station, a guy named uh, Dick Gillespie, and he came in one time. We'd, we looked up to him because he had, he had won a Grammy or is an Emmy Award or whatever it is for the producing the old Colgate Comedy Hour. And so he knew a lot about the business, and I asked him, we asked him, why can't we get a, our records going, and make, get going in, in the music business? And he said, you don't have anything to sell. He heard our feelings. He said, uh, you got to be different. He says, you guys are good, but good isn't good enough. He says, people won't go across the street to see a good musician. He says, costume yourself some way, write some new material, work up a style that's recognizable, but don't start out using it here and where you live in this town. He said, go to another town, and they'll think you'll, you were born that way. That was the best advice we ever got. Wow. We went to Key West, like I said, and uh, two weeks later we had a recording contract. No kidding. Wow. That's amazing. Where are some of the, the more interesting uh, places that you've played over the years that kind of stand out in your mind? Well, one is uh, the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. And uh, we were up there with, uh, there was a, two guys that had radio shows up there, Harden and Weaver. They were very popular in the D.C. area. And they had their English counterparts, the two Ronnies. They were there, two comedians from over there. And, uh, and the Navy band, huge Navy band, and us. It was quite a, quite a setup. And we did one in... Uh, in uh, Detroit, with a, it, was a, it was an all-star review, I guess, they had just the, group, the band Chicago on there, and, and uh, maybe, either them or Blood, Sweat, and Tears, I forgot which, and uh, your mamas and papas, and a whole string of, of stars, you know, and uh, those, I think, we stand out, but uh, there are a lot of places we've been that sometimes we get on the subject and we remember a town. And it's either it was either terrible, like a nightmare where the guy didn't want to pay you, or they were treated you lousy, or a place where you really made friends and had a lot of fun. So uh, it's just too many to pick one out like that. Uh, <laughs> if you'd have told me before the show, I'd have written something down. <laughs> well, that's all right. I think I, I'd say the Kennedy Center is pretty impressive. <laughs> that's a good answer. After we left that little label. Uh, they couldn't handle the distribution, so they made a deal with Mercury. So we wound up on Mercury with Tennessee Birdwalk and those songs. And uh, when we left there for contract reasons and I went to a label called Mega, who I, that I just had to hit, help me make it through the night with Sammy Smith. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were with them a couple of years, and they went, they went out of business unexpectedly. And we were picked up by uh, Epic and Columbia at CBS. Mm hmm and we spent a couple of years at CBS cutting a lot of nice stuff with big strings. Like one song is just one more song, which is one of our favorites. And it's like a standard. Uh, we still get a lot of play on that. It's a, it's a medium ballad with strings, but with a country, you know, country style. We had the steel guitar, Lloyd Green, and everybody on the steel guitar, mm -hmm. and we still sang our way. And then after that, we went with uh, uh, United Artists. So we got, I guess we've been with all the majors. Well, I guess so. I guess so. Uh, you mentioned Lloyd Green. I uh, was talking to Freddie Hart the other day, and Lloyd Green is the one that came up with that little lick on uh, the song Easy Lovin', you know, that little dit da Yeah. And, uh, Lloyd played on almost all our records. Yeah, he's man, he is one of the greats. Uh, still is. 
um, mm -hmm. been on some farewell party, Gene Watson, and just so many great hit records. It's it's always interesting when I run into somebody else, you know, that's uh, records that he's played on. It's amazing, and it's yeah. Of course, I played on Steel on some of our records. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. I love steel guitar. I think that's my that's my all time favorite instrument. That's that's got to be quite a feat to learn how to play with all this thing. That's like a machine, you know. Yeah. Well, I played lap steel, so. I, I'd have to know a lot more tricks than the guys do that have pedals. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. I no have to doubt. turn the bar in different angles and things, you know. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, what are you guys up to these days besides uh, burning up the independent charts? Are you doing some tour dates? No, we're not touring right now. But we get a lot of offers, to, well, not a lot, but a, a, a fair amount of offers to go out. But they, we don't have any tours lined up for instance, somebody would call here and want us to come up and do a concert, say, in Cincinnati. And uh, it's a one-night thing. But the time you pay to get up there, but the time you get up there and hire people to help you and do all that and you get back, you're broke. Yeah. If, if you had an yeah. agent to line everything up in order, the logistics so you could come home with some money, it would be worth it. But uh, we haven't had that happen yet. It's a, it's a tough thing, you know. A lot of people just think people magically show up and just, you know, perform this music. But yeah, you said it. Yeah, there's a lot to it. I've I've done it. I know exactly what you're saying. I definitely know. I used to tell people we we play for free. We get paid for setting up. That's right. Absolutely. I've said the same thing, <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> so, do you have uh, some new recordings in the works? Uh, we recorded an album three years ago. Uh, it didn't do much, but in the indie field, he had quite a bit of play, but it never went over to pop. I don't think it's possible for us to go over to the pop country now because they're they've gone. There's hardly any country left in it. I think. Yeah, well, you don't need to, as as far as I'm concerned, with stations like what I'm doing with the internet and you know with satellite radio. You know, we're we're playing this kind of music, and and there's a huge demand that people want to hear it because I, my listeners grow every single week. And uh, more and more artists are finding this out, so they're going, you know, this is where they're going mm -hmm. to get their music played. And there's a tremendous uh, demand out there, so I, you know, I think you found, a, you know, have, you found your market there for sure. Yeah, good. Uh, you know, the, you mentioned Freddie Hart. He's a terrific guy, isn't he? Uh, he's one of my favorites. He's, he's mm -hmm. become a dear friend, and his uh, manager, Don Bradley, and I become friends. And, man, they're just, they speak the world of you, too. That's uh, originally how I... Uh, um, got uh, kind of in contact with you was uh, from Don Bradley and I'm so thankful for that because uh, oh that's nice I'll have to find him and thank him yeah I, I really love what you guys do and I love playing your songs and, and you've got you know you've got some beautiful songs you've got some fun songs and yeah and yeah. you know that like yeah. I like I said earlier that Bethlehem Steel song I mean that's you know you, it's one of those songs where I can close my eyes and I can picture the the story you know when, that's, when, that's when, the one that did the trick for us I think yeah that, that Edward Walker oh absolutely absolutely and when you have songs like that I mean you can't go wrong that's that's what it's all about as far as I'm concerned you've done that so very well and you guys last, sing, time, last time we worked with Freddie Hart was in 1999 uh, in Nashville and we had a lot of fun up there. He's a wonderful guy, I'll tell you what. Um, you know, and you, you and Misty sing so well together, too. You have that special chemistry. You know, I think it's you know, it's hard to come by in, in duets a lot of times, but you guys really have that magic there. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. sounds like you have a lot of fun, too. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but we have a mastering studio here now. We do mastering for indie artists and small labels and stuff. Oh, okay. In fact, I've done mastering for name artists too but not lately they've been dying off yeah i know we've lost a lot of them this year that's for sure I know, yeah i'm thankful that uh, i've been able to talk to as many as i've been able to talk to in these last few years you know i've been only, only been doing this show for a few years but i've i've gotten to uh gotten to a lot of them and i'm thankful for it well, Jack, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. I really want to thank you for taking the time and giving my best to Misty. And, uh, sure will. Anytime you have new music, I hope you'll get it to us because we'd love to get it on the show. Okay. Uh, send me the address and everything, will you? I will certainly do that. Okay, Jack thanks. Blanchard. Yeah, Jack Blanchard, thank you so much for being on My Kind of Country. We're going to play uh, the second Tuesday in December. We're uh, going to be a little bit late now, but I think we can still play that. <laughs> Here's Jack and Misty Morgan. On My Kind of Country as we continue right here on Fish Creek Radio. Jack Blanchard, thank you again.